Welcome back, sewists. Can you believe it's September already? I'm kind of in shock. The summer flew by. Uh, it's still nice and hot where we are, though. We're 100 degrees. Um, and I'm going to sew up another sort of transitional garment today. It is the swing dress top and leggings. We're going to be making the dress today. This is another PDF pattern. This is by DG Patterns. I got it off of Etsy. I will link below so you can get your own pattern. I expect this to be a morning sew. It is a front, a back, a sleeve, and a pocket. Those are our pattern pieces. It's for knit. This is the fabric we're using today. This is a waffle knit. I really wanted to use something from my stash. I actually had three fabrics pulled out that I thought would work, but because of the length, they were all about a half a yard shy of what I needed to get it out. If I were going to do just the top and not the dress, I could have done it. I had two yards, needed two and a half. So I ran to Hobby Lobby, bought this really cute waffle knit. It's like what you see your Henley shirts or um, like thermal underwear almost made out of. It's not as heavy as a thermal underwear, but it's sort of that waffle weave or waffle knit. So this is what we're going to use today. It's nice and basic. I think I'll be able to wear it a lot. Um, once again, this is an A-line sort of shape, which is great for my figure, but I might belt it because I do tend to prefer a belt personally for my look. So that all said, let's start cutting. Fit check for the day. This cute little vintage top is a tutorial I did a few, maybe a few months ago. So I'll put a link down below for it. If you'd like to sew it up, it's a quick sew, 1970s, I think, late 60s, early 70s. Very easy to sew, and it's one that's still out there. You just have to go searching for it on Etsy or eBay. I'm sure you could find it. Okay, I have two and a half yards of 60 inch wide fabric, so I'm just making sure it's enough. I measured twice before I went to the store, so I'm, I knew I'd have a little extra. What I'm deciding now is both of these are cut on the fold, so I can just bring them right over to this fold like that. You can see it's folded in half. So I have my front and my sleeve. Because this is non-directional, I can flip the pattern pieces. The front and the back both go on the fold. My pocket down here, and then here's the back. I don't have it pinned down, but you can see it's going to fit fine. I'm gonna have a little leftover. I think I needed a two and an eighth. I bought two and a quarter to be safe. And now we're ready to cut out. While we're here um, laying out and cutting, on this piece of directions, looks like this. Um, it, down here in the corner, I put a little star by it for myself. It says, you also need a piece of fabric to create a binding for the neck. They did not give us a pattern piece for this. They just told us the dimension, dimensions to draft it ourselves. If you think you're gonna love this pattern, you're gonna make it a lot, I would just draft a pattern piece. It's gonna make your life so much easier um, every time you go to cut it out. And I think this is one that I will use quite a bit. It's also a great just top. It has a cute little top. So I'm going to make a pattern piece that is three centimeters, which is about an inch and a quarter by whatever your neck circumference is minus 10 centimeters, which is four, about four inches. So I'm gonna measure my neck. You have to measure front and back, get the full measurement. So when we measure front and back, we're getting half. We have to double it, then subtract four inches. If you're in the US, 10 centimeters if you're everywhere else in the world. So I'm gonna draft that pattern piece real quick and show you what it looks like. To measure the neckline, this has quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to take my tape measure and I'm standing it up and I, I'm not subtracting my, court, my seam allowance, though I could. This one is like seven and three quarters is the front. Now that's half, remember. And then I'm gonna take, I hold it at seven three quarters. I come over here and I measure this neckline starting at the seven and three quarters and follow it around. And now I'm at 13 and a half for both necklines. So that's my half measurement. So if I double that, that's 27 inches. That's how long it needs to be, but I have to subtract four, so I'm back to 23 inches. So I'm going to draft a rectangle that is 23 by an inch and a quarter. Here's my little neck band, ready to go, and it is four inches smaller than the neckline measurement. So I'm gonna, I've labeled it. You want to cut it so the stretch goes this way, you just need one. All right, we're ready to just start cutting. Thank you. 
All right, so I've got my front, my sleeve, and one set of pockets cut out. I've now got my back laid out and ready to go. And then down at the very bottom down here, way down here, I'm gonna just roll forward. I have taken my neck band and I've laid it on the fold. So I marked, when I made the neck band, I marked the center front, which is half. So I can just lay it on this way and cut out a neck band super easy. Don't forget, if you're doing the pocket version, which I always do, you need four pocket pieces. We've only cut two. So you need to come in and either cut another pocket piece down here or out of your scraps, get a second pocket piece or a second set of pocket pieces. So you end up with four. Going to finish cutting this out and we'll meet you over at the sewing machine. All cut out. We're ready to start sewing. This has quarter inch seam allowances or seven millimeter uh, seam allowances. So they kind of accept, expect you to be sewing on your overlock. If you don't have an overlock, you don't need one. You can 100% sew this on your sewing machine with a small zigzag and you're fine. On my machine, it is, I believe, a one width and a one and a half length is the settings I set for a zigzag when I want to sew knits without my serger so I don't get pop stitches. So don't worry if you don't have an overlock. You can still sew this. Um, the other thing I want to say, if you are sewing with an overlock, I have a four thread set up and I only have three colors available in my burgundy and I have this one that's variegated. It's brown and burgundy variegated. And so what I've done, because I want to use the four thread for sewing it, is I've stuck the one that, one of these is not like the other. I've stuck that one on the second needle or the needle that's on the inside, not the one that is that makes the stitch, not the farthest one out. And that way um, it shows the least all the way around. It shows the least in the stitching and it will not show at all from the outside. So that's where I've stuck it. It's still, it's gonna blend away. It's not gonna be very noticeable, but I just didn't have it because my other spool that I bought is what I'm going to be doing all of my straight stitching at the machine with. So I want to make sure I don't have an issue with that. So we're ready to start sewing and it starts with pockets. Now, if you've done pockets with me before, usually, um, patterns will have you just sew the pocket on and then they sew all the way around and I never like to do that. Today we're going to do it. We're working with a knit with quarter inch seam allowance. It's much more forgiving. So today I'm going to do it just by their directions. Shocker. I seldom do that, but we're going to today. So let's get our fronts and our backs. There are little notches or markings on the pattern um, to transfer. Let me show you that. So this is what the little notches on the pocket look like. This is for pocket placement. So we're going to actually line our pocket up between these two little markings right here for the pocket. And there's some on the front and the back. On the sleeve, this is what the shoulder markings look like. Back, shoulder, front has a single notch. For the sleeve length, and I forgot to mention this, I'm pretty sure it just has the long sleeve and then you just decide how short you want it. I cannot remember there being a short sleeve marking. So this is what I chose for my short sleeve and then I folded up what I wanted for a hem, marked it and made my own hem line for my sleeve. Now this is deeper than quarter inch, but I think it looks nicer, um, especially on a sleeve, it won't roll up. So that's what I chose to do. All right, so here's our pattern pieces. Again, we made a neckline also, a little neck binding. They're saying take our pockets, right sides together, match up the notches. So that's how theirs look. Blue is right side, gray is wrong side on their patterns. So here's my pocket. It's hard to see on here, but here's my pocket lined up. This is the back. I'm gonna do my back and my front at the same time. I've got both of them pinned on. Here's my front pinned and ready to go. My pocket pieces right sides together. So we're gonna go ahead and sew this now according to the directions, just like that. Whether on your serger or your sewing machine, lift up your presser foot, line up the back of the pocket right behind the needle or right in line with the needle. And that's where we're gonna start stitching. If you're using your overlock, make sure you're not trimming anything off. Some overlocks, you can actually disengage the knife, which would be not a bad idea. Otherwise, you're gonna sew with your fabric next to the knife on this side, so you're not trimming anything. Whether you are at the sewing machine or the overlock, you do not want to be stretching while you're sewing. Let the machine feed nice and even and flat without pulling. Um, it will distort your fabric, what we don't want when sewing with knits. Now we're ready.
ready to edge stitch, we're going to find our front pattern piece. You don't need to do this to front and back. Usually you just do it to the front. So the front has the deeper neckline. And we're going to open up our pocket and it's always good to give it a quick press at the iron so that it lays super flat. And we're going to edge stitch. So let me give it a quick press. All right, when pressing, we're gonna fold our pocket out. So this is the right side and we're gonna press right along this seam. You want the seams to all press to the outside like this because we're gonna come along and we're gonna sew around here in just a minute. So this side has been pressed and steamed. This side has not been pressed, so you can just see a slight difference in how it looks. So I'm gonna press this one too. It makes it much flatter when we're ready to go and do our top stitching along here. While I'm here pressing the pocket, if I have any wrinkles like this, I go ahead and press it now, get it taken care of, including if there's a fold line from being on the bolt, just get all of that pressed at once. We're ready to edge stitch. This is just a straight stitch foot. I'm doing a straight stitch, about a uh, three on my machine. And I'm on this foot, it has a marking right here that I can use to line up with the fold and that just helps me keep it nice and straight and also keep it pretty close. I can actually even move it to the inside if I wanted to get it really, really close, but I, there's no reason to. That means I haven't sewn yet today when my machine makes that noise. Then we'll back stitch. Okay, I had to stop and engage my uh, even feed foot because it makes life better. Now I'm not stretching, I'm really just choking up right at the needle to make sure it's feeding nice and even. I'm not pushing it, I'm stabilizing it with my hand. So when you see me here with my starfish hand, that's all I'm doing, that's stabilization. You can see I can like scrunch it up and the machine pushes it through on its own. I'm just making sure it doesn't bounce or move. And that is what the edge stitch looks like inside the pocket. It won't even show because the pocket's gonna get turned to the inside, but it keeps the pocket from peeking out. Okay, so we have sewn on our pocket. We have edge stitched the pockets to the front. Now they're saying, um, give it another press, which we've already done. This is how it should look. Then they have us sew on the pockets to the back, which we've already done. Because we did them all at the same time. And then they actually, um, let's see, here's this pocket sewn on. Here's the pocket pressed. And they're actually edge stitching the back of the pocket too. So it won't hurt. We can do that if you want to. Pockets are completely done in edge stitch. We are now going to pin together at our shoulders, right sides together. We are going to do shoulder seams. This is how mine looks. Pin together. So we're putting right sides together and pinning at the shoulder. So here's my right side. Here's my right side. So we're looking at the wrong side. It's really easy once your pocket is on, you can tell, you can see the surging or the rough side of your pocket um, when you're putting this together. All right, so now we're just going to sew these together quarter of an inch. You can either zigzag it at your sewing machine or sew it at the serger. Once again, make sure you're not stretching as you're sewing. Take those pins out at the overlock. <laughs> We have shoulder seams. So now we are, it's okay, we're gonna open and press and we're ready for sleeve. So let's give this a quick press. They just open it up. When you press, press your seam allowance towards the back. Got my sleeve here. I'm going to transfer the markings and all I'm going to do is open between the two layers. I can see my little marks and I'm just gonna transfer them to my fabric. Okay, so I've got all of that marked. We're doing right sides together again. So we're gonna match up the front of our sleeve. Start at the shoulder, but you wanna have front to front and back to back on the sleeve so that you don't get your sleeve in backwards. Here's my shoulder, here's my front. So I'm gonna match up shoulder notch to shoulder seam. And then I'm gonna come down here to the end and I'm gonna just match right on the edge. There's usually no ease or change in the bottom of the sleeve and the bottom of the arm size, so you can just line those up and pin it in. Because this is knit, even if there's some ease, you can e it, it will go in very easily 
the ease will be easy in a knit. We're just gonna pin and just gently, very gently stretch if you need to, to ease in anything. And do the same for the back. So I have one sleeve pinned in. I'm gonna turn it this way. This is the sleeve side. And turn it towards the window a little bit. Here's the sleeve. Here's the bodice. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I always do this. I pin both at the same time. You may not want to. Now, if you have a really hard time with sleeves, one of the things you can do is put the sleeve down and the shirt or the bodice on top. And what that does is it allows the feed dogs of either machine to do any easing for you. It usually works out great. The feed dogs handle any easing. Let's stitch them in. So once you've sewn it, always check that you don't get any pleats, and I have one. And I know why, because the fabric is so spongy. So I'm going to pull out just a couple little stitches here, because we do not want any pleats. Make sure you're cutting threads and not fabric when you rip out. All right, fix that little hooky-do. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in the other sleeve. Always check your, always check your work as you go. It's better to find it early on than um, be so sad when it's completely done and you find a mistake that's going to be harder to fix because you've top stitched over it or crossed it with another seam. All right, the sleeve is in. Now, depending on how you want to hem this, if you're going to do a um, cover stitch hem, then just move on. If you want to just top stitch hem it like I'm going to in a minute or twin needle it, I'm going to go ahead and serge the edge of my sleeve now. Be careful that you don't lettuce your sleeve unless you're going for that look. And to lettuce it is really just to stretch it while sewing, which you could do. It could be very cute on this. You could totally have a lettuce sleeve and hem. We are now depth 15. We're ready to sew it together. So we're, we're almost done. Now you could, if you want to, you could do your neckline facing at this point. Like there's some things that as far as the order of, of how you sew, doesn't matter if they don't cross. So I'm going to see how I'm just flipping this at the shoulder seam. We're going to line up front to back, starting right here at the edge, line up our seams, <clears throat> line up our pockets, pin the whole shebang, and serge around it or sew around it. Always give it a haircut. See, I have these threads here. Um, not giving a haircut as you go is one of the top reasons why you'll have problems at your sewing machine and you'll have some struggles. The machines, no matter how wonderful the machine is, can easily catch a loose thread hanging out there and pull it down in the machine and it will jam it up. So I pinned at the um, under sleeve right here at the edge and now I'm coming all the way to the hem and putting a pin in it. Because this is one long seam that we're going to be sewing, we want to um, be careful how we line everything up. So now I'm lining up my pockets. Now I can tell you, because we're doing this in one fell swoop, which is not my favorite way, I know it's the most common way, but I don't love it, we will probably have to come back at the pocket and do a little stitching to finesse that pocket and make it look pretty part of the seam cot where it doesn't lay nice. So I'm gonna just hold this up so you can see. So I have pinned together. I'm going to put it with the um, bodice up front or the, sh the front of the garment up on the machine. And I'm gonna start up here and I'm just gonna sew all the way around pocket and everything and ending at the hem. Then I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna start at the hem and sew the other direction. Now this is common in um, manufacturing to do it this way, where you sew top to bottom and then bottom to top. The thing you have to be careful of if you do sew this way is that you don't stretch because you can actually distort the garment because you're sewing the same it actually can kind of shift it. So if you're a rough sewer and you push hard and you pull as you go, you will have a distorted garment. Normally, if you let the machine handle it and you're um, gentle with your project, 
It makes it so a little faster. It makes it so beautifully and you will have no issues. I'm going to pin both of my seams so when I sit to sew, I can just stitch. So here's the bottom. I've got garment front on top, garment back on bottom, and we are stitching. Right sides together. All right, I've just come up from the hem. Here's the pocket. So how I handle this at the serger, and you'll do the same sewing machine, is I am carefully sewing up to, and again, you can disengage your knife on a lot of machines, and I'm pulling out of the way. We do not want to get a pleat here, which is one of the reasons why this is not my favorite way to sew it. And we're just gonna carefully go around. If it trims a little in the pocket, I don't care. As long as I catch all my layers. So you can see that's how it stitched it. So to do the twin needle, I only have one spool of thread. I need two to do a double needle. Um, but the easy thing to do is just to make a spool, put a little bit on there. You don't need a ton, we're just top stitching. So make a second bobbin um, of your thread and put it on your, your spare little spool holder. And then you'll have two bobbins going, one on the bottom, one on the top, acting like a spool of thread. And you can do your twin needle that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my collar first or my little neck binding first because then I'm done with the serger and all that's left and then I don't have to worry about changing out my needle like I'm going to change out my needle I'll be done I want to make sure I don't need to do any pocket work so I'm going to just take my little collar piece right sides together and I'm going to sew it um, so the quarter inch so it's a full circle so here's my little tiny seam My spool on my serger is wound funky and it's starting to give me issues. So now that we've done that, I'm gonna mark, while it's still folded like this, I'm gonna put a pin in this folded edge. This is going to be my center front. So now I'm gonna fold it in half. This time I'm doing wrong sides together when folding. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here at this seam. Fold it in half wrong sides together and this is my center back will be the seam and where I have put the fold up here will be my center front and then we will just match evenly so I'm going to now do the same thing to my garment I'm going to put shoulder seam to shoulder seam and then find the folded front and that's my center front I'm going to put a pin in it and then I'll do the back, put a pin in it so I have my center back. Now because this is not, sometimes when you um, are sewing a neckband like this and they make the pattern piece for you, it'll actually have markings for the shoulder and then all of that on the pattern piece to make it a little easier for you. We drafted our own, we don't have any of that. So this is how I do it, I quarter it. So now I can take my center back, which is where the seam was, and I'm gonna line it up with my center back of the garment and we are doing right sides together so I'm pinning this on the right side so here's you can see how much smaller the neckline is because we made it four inches smaller or ten centimeters smaller now we're going to not pin it at the shoulder seam because the shoulder seams are not in the quarter so we're going to now pull it this way we're going to match front to back and we're going to find where the halfway mark is for that, so it's almost an inch into the front. I'm gonna put a pin in it. And now we will pin, and we'll do the same with our neck band. So we're literally just finding the four even markings on this, center front, center back, and it's not shoulder. The shoulder is offset. It's not perfectly quartered, so you will not be marking at the shoulder for this. And this is, again, quarter inch seam allowance, so when we're done, you'll have a very narrow little neck band. Zigzag it on or search it on at the quarter inch. When we've got this on, we'll be ready to go press everything. Everything's gonna get a good press. We're gonna press up our hems. So here's our quartered little neckline. We're gonna start in the center back and we're just going to stitch it around. And if you feel like you, and you will be stretching this time, we will be stretching our neck band to match 
the neckline. You don't want to stretch the neckline at all. All the stretch is in the band. And what that does is it makes the band fold in nice and cup the neckline. Makes it pretty instead of st sticking out weird. Can you see? I'm stretching a little bit. All right. I'm going to slide my serger over so it will support the weight of this dress because it's going to pull and fall on the floor. I can tell already. All right, I'm putting dress side down, neck band up because the neck band is smaller. I have to stretch it to meet and I want to make sure I don't end up with any holes or problems. All right, I'm at the serger. I'm serging my band on. That's how it looks. This is how it looks when it comes out the other side. We are, and you can see how narrow it is. We're gonna give it a press, and then I think I may twin needle around this too. I'll show you over the sewing machine in a minute. We are surged around. I definitely am going to top stitch down this band. The thread is so heavy against the, this fabric that it's making it flip. I don't love that. So I, when I'm twin needling, I'm going to twin needle this too. So I'm glad I waited to do all of that. And we're going to give everything a press. It's a complete garment now. All that's left are hems and twin needles. I'm gonna to switch to my, uh, actually, let me check my pockets. I wanna make sure the pocket lays nice and that I don't have some weird looks at my pocket edge. I'm gonna come in and do some pocket doctors. The pockets need some doctoring because we did the one step sewing. Here's the right side of the pocket where we've done all of that and it's it always does this. It just doesn't ever lay quite as nice as I would like. It just pulls funny. I've got a little thread right here. So let me show you how I fix that. Okay, we are lining up with our stitching line with our straight three. We're gonna straight stitch this. We're not even zigzagging. I'm gonna stitch in the old stitching line. It's sort of like back stitching. And I'm gonna come up and stitch next to this pocket line, but not on it. I'm gonna be right next to it. I'm gonna be in the garment side just a little bit at the top only, about right like that, just half an inch. Back stitch, and we're gonna come down to the bottom and we're gonna kind of do the same thing right next, you can see here how we go around and how it just doesn't line up quite right. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start about a half an inch right next to the pocket. Let's give it, always back stitch around those pockets. They take so much wear and tear. And then we're gonna just ease that into our searching line. So it's gonna be pretty hard to see, but this is where I stitched because the machine thread is matched very closely, so it really blends away. This is where I stitched on the inside. And now the pocket really disappears. Like here's my pocket bottom and my pocket top, and the pocket is much less noticeable. It really disappears now that we've done that little bit of stitching. Now it's ready for a press. Okay, I'm doing that for both pockets. Now, if you like to put tags in, because this does not have facings and things where you normally would stick a tag, I would put it like in the side seam or the shoulder seam personally. All right, I'm gonna get everything a good press, including the hems. I'm gonna turn up the hem and press the hem, and I'll meet you back here at a twin needle. All right, I put on my twin needle. This one is a pretty narrow um, space apart. They come really wide and really narrow. I think this is a two width apart. I put on a foot that has a wide opening so I don't break off a needle because I was using a straight stitch foot. Also make sure that you have, if you have a straight stitch plate, make sure you've switched it out to one that zigzags. Might see how wide open that is. That's where the needles go through. If it just has a single hole, you cannot use a double needle. So double check those things. I have one thread here. Here is my extra bobbin that I'm using for thread. I've got it in my spool holder. When I thread, you can see I have this little thing here. So I pull it through that. This one's threaded normally and it is this needle. This one threads through that. The bot, My second one threads through that and then it threads pretty normally. There is a tension disc in here. I have a thread on each side of the tension disc. So the needle for the left is on the left side of the tension disc. The needle on the right is on the right side of the tension disc. I thread them up separately. And then I have put on this other color thread, this brighter red or burgundy. And that is my new bobbin. I've switched it out and put that on the bobbin. So the top will be perfectly matched. The bobbin will be off just a little bit. It'll kind of be this color. It's this color that I put on the bobbin. And we're ready to stitch. So this neck binding 
wants to roll to the outside. It's just, even after this is pressed, I've pressed it, it should lay like this, but it's not laying like I want it to, um, partly because of the weight of the fabric, lots of, there's lots of reasons why this can happen. So I'm going to actually use my twin needle and top stitch around, I'm pressed my seam allowance down, and I'm going to slide this in. I always start in the back or at a shoulder. I'm looking at where my needles are so that I can line this up properly and I'm just gonna stitch all the way around. So on mine, if I use this folded edge or this seam edge against the toe of the foot, it lines up perfectly. So that's how I'm going to do it. I'm just gonna line this edge up as I stitch. Um, you can back stitch if you want to, or you can just, because this is a circle, you can just catch it when you come back around. All right, this is how it looks. It's nice and stretchy. You can see my one mismatched thread there. <laughs> then you can't even see the bobbin on this, but the bobbin zigzags between the two needles. So it gives you a stretch, stretchy stitch, even though it is a straight stitch. So after I'm through stitching this, I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing for the hem of the at the bottom of the skirt portion. I'm gonna be stitching way up here because I wanna get close to the edge of this to catch it so it, my um, hem doesn't flip out. And then I'll do the same thing for the sleeves. I have not pressed the sleeve up. I've got to press the sleeve up and do the same thing for it. And we are done. We're on to hem. I'm using, again, a close together, close together needle. You could do a wider one, especially on this hem. But this is how it looks. Twin, uh, with a twin needle. And you can actually come in and do another decorative one if you want to have more layers of stitching, but look at how stretchy that is. And because I'm stitching real close to this edge, see how it's marrying it so well? It's making it nice and tight and smooth and that hemline will not flip out. All right, I'm, the last thing is the sleeve. I've removed my um, tray table so that I have the free arm. It makes it a lot easier to go around the circle of the sleeve. I have cut about a 5 eighths of an inch hem for myself for the sleeve, so that's what I've turned up. I think they said three centimeters, so it just depends on how you cut it, but that's what I cut for myself. So one last little stitch around both sleeves and we're done. It's another pressing, but I have a super comfy, loose little dress. And I'll meet you over and we'll try it on and see how it looks. Okay, feels like I'm wearing a nightgown. This is just so comfy, soft, easy to wear. Um, let me back up and just show you just as a plain little loose dress. So cute. So you can see how soft and flowy it is, the pocket. Not much to it, right? So soft and flowy and easy. Let me throw on a belt. I pretty much always prefer a belt for myself. I just think it always, um, for my shape, is better. So that's it with the little belt. Neckline, it's literally a t-shirt dress, A-line t-shirt dress. It does have a shorter length, so you could just make the t-shirt, no pocket. This was so fast. It is 11 o'clock. I think it took me two hours total filming um, and everything to make it. I would suggest on this neckline, mine, it didn't stretch out, but it's wide. Um, and I may actually want to go down a size for myself. This is certainly plenty roomy um, the way it is. So if I make it again, I may actually size it down a little bit. But you can see the sleeve length and everything. All right, I'm gonna try it on with a pair of leggings real quick. Give me just a second. Here we are with the legging. Legging no belt, casual, easy to wear. You could even throw a little sweater over this. Okay, another really easy staple project, something that you could wear every day. I'll see you next week for another fun video.